What's going on YouTube? John and Tony out here at the airport with the E-Flight Ultimate 3D. Some of you guys asked, why didn't I do rolling Harriers and some other stuff with the extra 300? Uh, the answer is I got so engrossed in working with the uh, inverted Harrier and trying to master that I just completely forgot to do anything else. So on the Ultimate here, we're gonna do some of that stuff, show you guys how that's all done. We do have Apache gunships flying around from Raleigh Durham International. So if you hear that, that's what you're, uh, that's what you're listening to currently. We're gonna be trying a new format out today too. Uh, I'm gonna just try to stay as quiet as I can and actually dub over what I'm doing in post. Yeah, gunships are just all over. We're like uh, crazy. So first and foremost, uh, we'll go over setup real quick and I will just actually talk about that on camera. I've found that my 3D planes fly best with reduced aileron travel and maximized elevator and rudder travel. This one especially. Too much aileron throw and it becomes unstable, even with a lot of expo. I'm flying it at 60% throw right now with 50% expo, and it's almost too much throw. But it's still controllable and I can still make it do what I want. Let's start with hovering. Begin by adding elevator input so that the nose of the aircraft becomes completely vertical. Once vertical, the key to hovering is minor corrections. While it looks like I'm moving the sticks a lot, I'm not really adding a ton of control input because I fly with a lot of expo to dampen my huge throws. How sensitive you prefer the sticks is up to you, but ultimately the key to hovering is minor corrections. If the plane begins to yaw, counter the yaw with opposite rudder. If it begins pitching toward you, use down elevator pressure to force it back upright. You can add roll correction as needed by countering the torque roll that begins forming with aileron input contrary to the spin direction. If the plane begins spinning to the left, add right aileron to counter it. Many planes will have a tendency to nose forward while hovering. Holding consistent back elevator pressure can help sustain the hover and keep it looking smooth. You'll have to feel it out on your model. Every one is unique. Harriers are next up. These are usually pretty easy to enter with a model designed for post-stall maneuvering, also known as a 3D model like the Ultimate. Begin by holding elevator input until the model stalls and simultaneously add throttle to keep the nose pointed up. You may notice wing rocking tendencies because there may still be enough airflow over the wings to allow one to stall which drops, causing the other one to stall and drop in succession. This can usually be ignored, but if you feel daring, you can almost completely negate this by increasing the angle of attack to the point where the wings are almost not flying at all. In layman's terms, make the nose point up more. We performed at least eight rolling Harrier passes, and this was the best one we could get with this model that made the cut. It's not really designed well for it, so getting it to do it properly requires really finagling the sticks to get it approximate. Entering a rolling Harrier can be done through a regular Harrier, but I prefer having some speed and entering with a roll. I roll left, which is how I learned to do it. As the model rolls to knife edge orientation, quickly add a burst of throttle and add right rudder. As it rolls inverted, add down elevator pressure and reduce thrust simultaneously. Add left rudder as it enters knife edge and throttle up quickly, and then as it levels out, you'll reduce thrust and add up elevator pressure. You will keep the roll the entire time you are rolling in the Harrier. The result looks like you're dancing your fingers across the sticks. Slow-mo should be useful here to help illustrate how it's performed. It should be noted that bigger models perform this maneuver much better. Inverted Harrier is similar to a regular Harrier, but requires more finesse. Too much throttle and the model will flip over itself. Trying to correct with ailerons runs the risk of stalling the model asymmetrically, causing a wing to drop in the model to potentially crash. There is a sweet spot for every model where the right amount of throttle will let the model fly, invert it with its nose pointed up without flipping. To begin, enter by holding full up elevator and reduce throttle, then slowly reapply throttle until the nose is pointed up 30 to 45 degrees. Steering will be done using rudder. If the model is flying toward you, the left rudder input will make the model go left, while right rudder input makes it go right. If it's facing away from you, the directions become inverted. Left rudder causes the model to turn right, right rudder turns it toward the left. Using rudder to steer the model while an inverted Harrier will be required to keep it stable throughout the maneuver. Speaking of noses pointed up, 
Torque rolls are just hovers where you let the torque of the spinning propeller rotate the model. Begin by entering into a stable hover and then find the sweet spot on the throttle where the model's hovering steadily. The model should begin to spin on its own beginning the torque roll. This is a more advanced maneuver and requires correcting the model's deviations from the hover in any orientation. This one will take some practice, but with practice eventually comes perfection. Torque rolls can be accelerated. While hovering, add aileron input in the direction of the torque roll. The model will begin spinning much faster than it normally would due to the torque adding to the roll produced by the ailerons. If this is done right, the model will not drop out of the hover, but will instead begin to quickly spin. It is possible for wind to disrupt the hover, so keep that in mind if you're flying on windy days and be prepared to adjust accordingly. Knife edge is essentially flying sideways. To enter, add thrust and add rudder input. Adding rudder tends to cause yaw coupling. Either the model requires down elevator input to fly straight with rudder, or it requires up elevator input. Well-designed models require little or no elevator input to correct. Most, if not all models, will require some aileron input. In a right rudder knife edge, left aileron is needed to keep the wings vertical. The opposite is true for a left rudder knife edge. Knife edge circles are a neat move. Enter with the same commands to begin a knife edge pass, but add back elevator pressure to control the direction of the model and force it to fly in a circle. You can also use up elevator pressure as well. Light pressure on the elevator is all that's needed. If the model begins deviating from controlled flight, correct with aileron input and add a little more throttle to stabilize it until you're ready to exit the maneuver. Knife edge spins are my favorite maneuver, but they're also very taxing on the airframe. If a model is going to suffer an in-flight breakup, a KE spin might be what causes it, or over G on the airframe from high-speed maneuvering. To begin a KE spin, I use down elevator and a slight bit of left aileron with full left rudder and full throttle to cause the model to fall while spinning around its wing. This model, however, requires full right rudder with a slight left aileron input and down elevator to produce the spin, which is usually what would be required to create a blender or inverted flat spin. Chaining maneuvers together creates a more visually interesting 3D routine and keeps your audience entertained. Simple techniques like this hammerhead to inverted flat spin add variety and keep people guessing as to what you'll perform next. Wind causes a number of difficulties, first among them being the power needed for the model to fly the same ground speed into a headwind. This also applies to 3D maneuvers like the Harrier I'm performing here. While wind does add difficulty, it does allow models to come to a dead stop in some maneuvers if the wind speed matches the airspeed of the model. This can be used to produce interesting twists on common maneuvers. The ultimate is literally hovering backward because the air mass is moving it. Everyone has seen a model hover at some point, but not everyone has seen a model hovering backward. That is what I mean by interesting twists on common maneuvers. So while wind causes problems, it can also be a tool in your arsenal to create interesting changes to maneuvers that we've all seen before. Inverted Harrier is neat, but how often do you see someone fly inverted Harrier to the point where it's not even moving at all? Take the chance to fly in wind if you can. Invest the time into your skills to grow and learn and adapt to challenges. Your anxiety response will diminish and your skills will improve as you train your brain to stop being afraid of flying in challenging weather. There's other techniques that I haven't covered, but I release these tutorial videos pretty often. If you haven't seen a specific maneuver you're looking for yet, I'll most likely cover it in the future. Let's finish this vid up. Five minutes. Battery 14.4 volts. All right, I think we've done enough here. Let's go ahead and bring her in. I wanted to grab her out of the air, but my hands are so sweaty because I'm not wearing my gloves right now that it would just slip out of my hands and I would risk a prop strike on my arm. So we're gonna call it quits here. Entering 
Engine reversed, engine normal. We'll take that. In the meantime, appreciate you guys watching. Hope this helped. I hope the new format helps too. It allows me to actually get my thoughts out in a better way rather than just nonstop incessantly babbling as I fly. So good little plane. We did actually find the wheel. My new friend, uh, you want to be on the camera? Sure. My new friend Kieran over there actually found it hanging out. We, uh, we've invited him to come hang out with us occasionally out here at the field or whenever he feels like it really. So uh, you'll probably see him more often in uploads coming forward. Uh, he was here last time too, but we didn't, weren't sure if he wanted to fly with us on camera or not. So we'll see you guys again. Thanks for watching.